There are 21 seats in the Nigerian Supreme Court. About four seats are vacant right now. Uh, it's talk time. The Nigerian Bar Association recently shortlisted lawyers for appointment as Supreme Court judges. The shortlisting, they say, followed a rigorous process of selection handled by a committee. But some lawyers believe the process was faulty and was carried out in an unusual haste. Wendy Agbo reports. The names on the list represent judicial excellence. Most lawyers agree. Now the list reflects some of our very best in terms of competence, in terms of character, in terms of knowledge. What defined forty is the process of selection. Position does not follow due process. And it is very important for a big change like that, that all lawyers should be consulted. They were not consulted. The question is, what is the hurry? Why must they give them three days? And what procedure did they follow? It is inimical to the judiciary. It is inimical to the profession. It was so sudden. It was so. It was as if, as if it was sprung on people. I think that's where the problem is. That is not. It's not. It has not enough consultation. Uh, if you want people now. Um, to go straight from the bar to the highest um, bench in the land. It should be more critical, more open. Tunji Gomez also believes that appointments from the bar to the bench is an exception, not the rule. They want to make it the rule now. And you know, like I said when I was opposing this, our people will start to extend it. It will be no longer a judicial matter. We will be appointing political judges. My brother is this. My attorney general must be Supreme Court judge. We won't have justice in the end. Norison Quakers, senior advocate of Nigeria, disagrees. All the constitution simply says is post court. You must have put in 10 years for the High Court, 15 years for the Court of Appeal, and also the Supreme Court. Even appointment as CJN, there's no provision in the constitution that you must graduate from the uh, high Court, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court, or you must have even been in the Supreme Court to be so appointed as CJN. All it just seems is 15 years post call. Regardless, Quakers is of the opinion that the process of selection could have been better. List of candidates will be published in the newspapers for the Nigerian society want to see. Two, if there are questions that uh, border on the integrity of any applicant, you are expected to make your comments. They barely be shortlisted. Right? So if you have issues concerning any one of them, matters that border on integrity, you're, you are at liberty to write to the National Judicial Council, the body that is responsible for the recommendation. They've been shortlisted, they have not been recommended. So you can raise questions. They say it is important that the country produce an independent and fearless judiciary, especially at this point in its history. Wendy Abu TVC News, Lagos. Well, the new CJN Walter Onoge seems to have stirred the hornet's nest uh, with this call uh, to the NBA to nominate lawyers, senior lawyers, and of course other lawyers uh, to, you know, to be recommended for the Supreme Court uh, seats. Now, this is a very uh, serious issue that seems to have uh, torn uh, the whole legal professional, the judiciary as a matter of fact, in two different uh, directions or even more than that. Well, our guest is uh, Dakbo Akinoshun. He's a lawyer himself. Uh, good morning and thanks uh, for joining us. Good morning. How yes. are you today? So what is fundamentally wrong or is there anything wrong with uh, the CJN asking that uh, lawyers or senior lawyers uh, be What's that word now? I'm just trying to look for the right word to use. Now, what's wrong with lawyers actually uh, being in the Supreme being Court? Uh, yeah, being selected as uh, Supreme Court uh, judges. We have examples that uh, happened in the past. You had uh, uh, Tesliba Elias, you had Augustin Namani, who performed excellently well. They came from the bar to the bench. There is certainly nothing wrong with uh, lawyers being selected from the mm -hmm. bench. I mean, from the practice. In fact, the Constitution makes provision for the appointment of judges in Section 231. 
-hmm. And the only requirement that the, Supre that the Constitution has is that such lawyers must have been practicing for at least 15 years. That is all that the Constitution asks for. So it is perfectly in order for the Chief Justice to appoint lawyers directly from practice. Yeah, but you have some, uh, especially uh, members of the bench, who are saying that this is not good for uh, judges, especially those of the appeal court or the high court, where traditionally you have picked uh, Supreme Court judges from, that this may be demoralizing and may affect their commitment uh, going forward. Uh, especially uh, members of the bench who are saying that this is not good for uh, judges, especially those of the appeal court or the high court, where traditionally you have picked uh, Supreme Court judges from, that this may be demoralizing and may affect their commitment uh, going forward? Yes, certainly, because the practice of the, has been to select or to promote judges from the Court of Appeal mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court, it, it can't have a demoralizing effect on judges who have been in the system and have been working at their optimum with a view to elevation to the higher court. However, one has to be careful in the reasoning for the selection. Mm -hmm. If you look at the world over and if you go to the United States, there is no provision that the, uh, the lawyer, the judge must come from the court of appellate courts to go to the Supreme Court. In our own constitution, it is not written there either. Okay. So it is a matter of style of whoever is at the top at the time. And as we've seen, some of the very brilliant judges we've had in the Supreme Court have come directly from practice. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily affect the quality where the person is coming from. On the other hand, it may actually lead to dynamism for somebody who has been outside the bench to come straight to the Supreme Court. He would have fresh ideas, he would have fresh inspiration. And there's also the possibility of bringing in younger people to the bench. If you, find, if you look in other countries, particularly the United States, which I looked at, you will see that the judges have been called to the Supreme Court between the ages of sometimes between 30, 43 and 55. Most of the judges in the Supreme Court of the United States were came into the bench between the ages of 43 and 55. And this is a country where the judges are there for life. Mm. It's interesting you talk about the Supreme Court in uh, places like the United States. Uh, now, we, we know that in the U.S., for you to be selected or nominated to sit on the Supreme Court bench, uh, your, some of your personal views or your political views actually determine who sits on the Supreme Court. Uh, say, for example, are you a pro-lifer? Uh, do you believe in same-sex marriage and all of that? Shouldn't we have some kind of uh, situation where that is brought to bear in Nigeria? Because it seems in Nigeria, just being an appeal court judge uh, or high court judge is enough uh, to, you know, uh, get you on the Supreme Court uh, bench. Well, well you find that even in the elevation process, there are a lot of other considerations that come to bear. Yes, like what? Depending on the administration that is um, promoting the judge. In Nigeria, the selection of judges is done by the NJC mm -hmm. and advise the president. And the president cannot go outside the advice of the NJC authority to select. In, in the other countries, the president selects at his own whim and discretion and is only subject to confirmation by the Senate. So in which case, he has a choice of looking for someone that has his own prejudices or someone that fits his own profile of a judge, particularly depending on what um, bent you have to politics. But here, it, it is quite different. The president really doesn't have that right of selecting who exactly he wants, but it is who the NJC recommends to him. Mm. 
and I'm feeling that you might want that to change. But uh, let's uh, give our viewers uh, some background to this. Uh, Mr. Dakwa Kiyoshin, you want to hold on for us and let's uh, shed some more light on this for our viewers. Now, Section 231, Subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, provides that a person shall not be qualified to hold the office of Chief Justice of Nigeria or of a Justice of the Supreme Court unless he is qualified to practice as a legal practitioner in Nigeria and has been so qualified for a period of not less than 15 years. But a few weeks back, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen, asked the Nigerian Bar Association to nominate its eligible members for possible appointment to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The nominees are former president of the NBA, Dr. Olisa Abakoba San, a former attorney general of Abia State Chief Awa Kalo, also senior advocate of Nigeria, Yunus Usman uh, San, Chief Anthony Digbe San, Mr. Babatunde uh, Fagbonlu San, and Mrs. Menaya Essien San. Others are Awalu Yadudu, Tajuddin Oladoja, and Ayuba Giwa. The nine nominated lawyers were called to the bar between 1978 and 1988. Now, there have only been two of such appointments since independence, and that it happened under the military rule, late justices Tesli Malayas and Augustin Namani, who were both attorneys general of the Federation at different times, they were appointed straight to the Supreme Court from the bar with Elias later becoming Chief Justice of Nigeria. Now in Britain, the country that colonized Nigeria, only those who are Queen's Counsel as a QC, an equivalent of Senior Advocate of Nigeria, San, are appointed into the High Court. The 17 justices that the Supreme Court presently has is the largest in the world. Okay, there you have it. Now, uh, a, a position like a Supreme Court judge, one would imagine, uh, Dakwa Kyoshun, that it, it's a very, very serious uh, business that a lot of thought, a lot of time uh, should be put into it. Now, when you call for the NBA to nominate, and of course, the NBA goes ahead and throws it out, throws it open and asks uh, lawyers, senior advocates of Nigeria to show uh, interest uh, shouldn't it be as a result of some kind of peer review mechanism where you have a system that picks out or that throws out people of integrity, uh, people who have experience uh, and all of that to actually sit on the uh, Supreme Court bench? The process of doing anything is always different from the intention of the law. Mm. The law makes it possible for you to appoint um, lawyers from practice to go to the bench. However, that process is not clear, is not clear. and that is always the challenge we have in implementing many laws in Nigeria. The process by which this has gone through has been likely criticized because many people felt um, the time given was too short. It kind of suggested that some people had been pre-informed and already had been pre-nominated before the, it was opened up. I would think with the kind of criticism that has followed it, the process should be reopened and given more time for people to consider. Because when you give only three days for a man to leave up his practice and go to the bench, it, it, it is somewhat of a rushed decision. And even some of those shortlisted, I have heard, are looking at not accepting that appointment again because they did not have time to think clearly through all that they were doing, how they hand over before they left what they are doing. Mm. Also, you said something quite important, the issue of um, integrity and peer review. Mm. While mm. even the law may find some people innocent, colleagues know which lawyers or who is a straight lawyer, who is not, and what your practices are or bent. And other people should be given that opportunity to address who is being nominated before it comes to the bench. And at such a level, it is quite very critical that integrity and other issues, particularly at this time in Nigeria, are very well thought through. What, what do you think the CJN Walter Onoge had in mind in throwing this open? Of course, he said that it's part of uh, the process of reforming the administration of justice uh, system. Uh, this plan to go over the appellate court, 
uh, you know, by picking Supreme Court judges from the bar uh, to the Supreme Court. Now, do you think it's a, a clear indictment of uh, the judiciary, especially when it affects the, uh, the appeals court uh, judges, especially with all that has happened in the last uh, six months or so? Certainly not. Certainly not. I, I do not think it is an indictment of the judiciary or the Court of Appeal. And if you notice, none of the Court of Appeal judges has been indicted or even mentioned in any ongoing investigations. So it, will, it would be preemptory or early to suggest that it, it is an indictment of any of the judges. What I think the CGN is trying to achieve here is bringing in fresh ideas and younger people to the bench. Because what you have now is that most of the judges in the Court of Appeal are already near retirement age by the time they get elevated to the Supreme Court. And we do have the largest number of judges in the Supreme Court compared to many jurisdictions. The U.S. has only nine, Britain has 12, and we have up to 21. So I think there's still a lot of room for elevation from the Court of Appeal. What is being selected now is just a few, to fill a few gaps there and there's still the opportunity to elevate people from the Court of Appeal. Mm. Now, now, there's those who say that judges go from being called uh, to the bar, you know, uh, to the bench without much experience at the bar in litigation. And so they're saying, look, a, a seasoned practicing lawyer would make a better Supreme Court judge, uh, as a matter of fact. Do, do you agree with uh, that uh, submission? Not, not truly. What, what you find is it depends on the individual. A person who has a bright mind, whether you're in practice or whether you're on the bench, will be a bright person. And the most important thing is you have people who have bright minds, who are open-minded and ready to ex research and explore the law. Only thing I may say this may add to it will be bringing subject matter experts. Um, people who have practiced in certain areas of law and have a little more knowledge than many judges. We have, we have times when the judges call practitioners from outside to come and give opinions on certain areas of the law which are novel to them. So I think bringing in such people from the bar to the bench will be a big advantage to the bench as well of having multiple ideas. And once the person has a bright mind, he will still be able to operate at the level of which the other judges are. Don't forget that we're all lawyers at some point in time and started from that place. All right, uh, Dakwa Akion Shun, lawyer. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC Breakfast this morning. Of course, uh, you can be sure that this discussion will uh, continue. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a good day. And that's how we wrap TVC Breakfast this uh, beautiful Monday morning, the sixth day of March. It's been nice knowing that you're there uh, to watch uh, the show. Of course, uh, let's do this again tomorrow. My name is Ngozi Alibu signing out. Bye now. Take care.